Look at Matthew 121. Go back to the beginning, and, and we'll look at Jesus un, kind of gradually unveiling his plan. And it starts at his birth. It was announced uh, by the angel that his name would be Jesus because he saves people from sins. So right there, uh, everyone is born a sinner. And that's why, you know, we just had a, a baby dedication recently. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could dedicate children and they'd be saved? Would that be great? It would save them a life of sin and a life of rebellion and a life of, of, of going their own way. But that's not what we dedicate. We don't dedicate children to be saved. We dedicate parents to lead their children to Christ. Because we were born of our father, the devil. And it's not until we're born again. And see, the problem with people teaching that by baptizing infants, they've been born again, their sins have been forgiven, they don't know how to lead anybody else to Christ if they don't take them back and baptize them or something. They don't understand the work of regeneration and the new birth and the conviction that Jesus only came to save people from their sin. And if a person will not acknowledge that they're a sinner, lost, hopeless, desperate, they can't be saved. In other words, the Lord says that, that you have got to and I have got to come just like, do you remember the, the publican and the Pharisee? The publican is a tax collector, a, a despised person. The Pharisee was a person that, that had long tassels to show how much they loved and served and prayed and gave. You know, they, they were all these external signs of their holiness. And when the Pharisee came in to pray, he prayed like this. And he looked up at God and said, I'm so glad I'm not bad like everybody else. In other words, you got a good deal when you got me because I'm really great. And the publican, it says in Luke, he couldn't even raise his head. He kept, his, he kept looking down and he couldn't even look up. But what he said is, God, be merciful to me. And by the way, there's an article in the Greek language. It isn't a sinner, it's the sinner. He said, I'm the worst sinner I know in the universe, and I need your mercy. And you know what Jesus said? One of those two people went home justified. The one with that contrite, humble, penitent attitude before God. God looks at our heart, and he hates that pharisaical, you got a good deal with me. I'm not as bad as all those. Pfft. And salvation is only for sinners. But look what happens at salvation. Look at verse 23. By the way, this was written down after Christ's ministry. Matthew wrote this afterwards. This is him being inspired to write down what Jesus' life and ministry taught. And the life and ministry taught that he came to save sinners and he came that God could move in. And it says, call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. When we get saved, God moves in. Now, let me ask you, if the infinite God of the universe moves into something, do you think Anybody would know about it? it? It is amazing to me that people don't know if they've been saved. Do you know how John says it? 1 John 5 says there's only two kinds of people, those that have the Son and those who don't. They're the have-nots. There's the haves and the have-nots. The haves are saved. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God shall not see life. You see, salvation is only for sinners. And that's a real stickler. The one objection I have for most people is they don't think they're that bad. They're like the Pharisee. I'm not as bad as, and they'll say who they think is worse. The ones that get saved are the ones like this. They say, I am the worst, and I need your mercy. And what happens? Look at chapter 4, verse 17. What, what is the key? Jesus, by the way, in 4.17, this is the first public words of Christ. In chapter 3, he talks privately to John the Baptist, kind of like if you've ever been to a baptism up there. Uh, the people are talking to me in the tank. You can't hear it. They're talking to me. It's not public. You know, they're saying, boy, this water's cold, and I'm scared to death, and stuff like that. So Jesus talked to John. He says, you've got to baptize me. And John says, I don't want to. But that wasn't public. Then Jesus talked in chapter 4 to the devil rebuked him. 
That wasn't public. Nobody was there but Jesus and the devil and the angels watching. But look at 417. This is Jesus for the first time talking in public. What, what's the very first thing he said? What was his very first public word? Repent. Boy, that's a rare word nowadays. That's Jesus. And it, it wasn't once. He began from that time onward. It, I think that happens to be his theme. Jesus said, you are sinners that I came to save. You need God with you. And the only way you can have God with you is you need to repent. You need to say, everything about me needs to change. And I have to have a change of mind which will lead me to a complete change of behavior. Repentance is not conversion. Conversion is a change. I'm converted. I'm changed in my direction. Repentance is a complete transformation of my operating system, my mind. And then what happens? Well, look at this. Remember I said these are woven all through. I mean, I could, you know that. I could go all the way through the book of Matthew and do all these, and it would be fun. But let's not. Let's just stop in chapter 5 and look at verse 3. Here's Jesus in his longest sermon with the huge crowd that they're just flowing down the mountainside, Jesus begins teaching what we call the Beatitudes. And look what he says. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Whoa. Saved people go to heaven. They are of the kingdom of heaven. So, so what, what is attached to, to going to heaven? They are poor in spirit. Did you know in the ancient world there were three classes of people? Uh, I don't know that we still have uh, so clearly a distinguished class, but there were rich people, and rich people had enough food for several days. Remember, everybody lived from hand to mouth back then because of an agrarian society. So rich people had enough stored that they didn't have to run out and, and plow or harvest or grind or barter to get enough food for that day. So rich people had any type of storage. Now, there were degrees of rich. Some people had big barns and little barns and no barns and few barns, and, but there are many degrees of rich. Then there were the poor people. Poor people ate this morning yesterday's food. They ate it this morning. They went out and worked and got enough so that tomorrow morning they would eat yesterday's food, and they just went from day to day. They were day laborer types. Those were the poor. That was primarily Christ's audience. The poor heard him gladly. They, they were willing to not eat as much that day to hear his word. They were so interested. So there were rich, there were poor. Then there's this one. This actually is the word beggar, the poor in spirit. The, the third group, rich, many degrees, poor, beggars. These people did not have anything to start their day with. They, they exhausted everything the day before. They start the day with nothing. Poor people start with something. Beggars have nothing, and until they get something, they have nothing. Jesus said, until you get to the point where you say, I have nothing in my hand to bring for your favor and mercy, I, I simply cry out to you, have mercy on me. He said, that's the only way into heaven. You can't come proudly as a rich. You can't come squeaking along as a poor person. You've done kind of not as much bad as others. You have to come as a beggar in spirit. This is one of the most beautiful pictures of salvation. And they get the kingdom of God. And what characterizes them? Verse 4, they mourn. They're so aware of their rebellion against God. And verse 5, they are meek. They submit to him. And what does he do to them? Verse 6, they begin to hunger and thirst after his righteousness. And they get filled by him. In verse 7, they change. They become merciful. And, and God changes them on the inside. They become pure in heart. And all of a sudden, everybody notices in their life, verse 9, that they are a peacemaker. You see, Jesus taught the disciples what it meant to be saved.